Brought to you by the Presentation Guild. Welcome to the Presentation Guild's first Inspired by Design webinar with uh, Julie Turberg. I'm Nolan Hames. I'm a Microsoft PowerPoint MVP, and I run a visual communications and presentation design firm in Montclair. Uh, New Jersey. I'm very excited to be hosting this series with Julie. Uh, it'll be a monthly series. Uh, Julie Turberg is the art director for the Presentation Guild and a fellow Microsoft PowerPoint MVP. She's co-authored a couple of books on presentations in PowerPoint, and she also speaks at the Presentation Summit each year. She owns Turberg Design and specializes in creating custom presentations for clients all over the globe. Uh, she lives and breathes the, breathes the stuff, guys. Um, if she doesn't know it, uh, most likely nobody else does. I've known and loved her for years. Before I send it over to her, uh, just a little housekeeping. We do have 20 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, you can enter them in the Q&A panel. Uh, if you don't see that, you should be able to activate that at the bottom of your screen. There should be a little Q&A button down there. Uh, so definitely ask questions. We will um, try to ask Julie some as she goes through, but also um, at the end, we can, we'll definitely have some Q&A time. And I'll mention it again at the end, but our next webinar is already scheduled for Thursday, June 23rd. The information about that will go out shortly, and you'll be able to sign up for that. So without anything more, let me send it over to Julie. Thanks, Nolan. I'm uh, really, really excited about this series. Um, design is my passion, and presentation design is um, what I do every day. Uh, so welcome all of you. Hopefully this series will inspire you to go on and do beautiful things. This series is all about designing for presentations. And during the series, we're going to cover things um, having to do with where to find your inspiration. We're going to look at design trends. We're going to look at ideas for new presentation concepts and how to apply them to your own presentations. You're going to learn about keeping an inspiration notebook which is a place to house your finds for later. And you're going to see how to be influenced by your sources while avoiding a direct lift of the designs. I'm going to show you many examples of presentation graphics that were inspired by finds in my own no notebook. And of course, I welcome your ideas for future episodes. This is all about you. This isn't about me. I don't need to sit here and talk about myself and what I do. I want you to learn what it is that you're interested in. So I welcome your ideas. What would you like to see? You can send ideas to me in the, the Q&A panel right now, or later on you can message me on the presentationguild.org website. Um, you can reach me through the member directory, Julie Turberg. Um, you can do a public or private message, it doesn't matter. But please send me the ideas for what you'd like to learn in the future. Now, we all get stuck in a creative rut sometimes. Our presentations start to look boring and repetitive or dated. And in a rush to get the job done, we reuse the same approaches over and over and over. You want something fresh and new, but you don't always know where to turn. And really, we're always running against that clock. This is a perfect time for a bit of creative inspiration. Take a break from PowerPoint and look elsewhere for ideas. The creative process is fueled by inspiration. Look around you. Inspiration for new ideas can and should come from many different sources. Keep your eyes and your mind open for new colors and textures and layout ideas. Take bits and pieces from various places. You're going to want to copy the colors, textures, shapes, and layouts that you like and transform them and combine them into very combine these various influences into your own unique design. Let's call this a remix. Now, an interesting side note for more about this whole concept of remixing and the creative process, check out Kirby Ferguson's TED Talk. Um, I think it's from 2012, or he's got the entire thing in a video series and he's expanded on it at his website, everythingisaremix.info. Kirby talks about music and movie remixes, but he makes the point that copy, transform, and combine are the basic elements of all creativity. He says that creation requires influence. The bottom line here, guys, is that you have to transform the elements that inspire you and build upon them to make something new. Um, Nolan, what did you call this first step? 
Uh, you didn't call it copy. What did you call it? Well, I think I asked you, um, where's the circle for steel? I added it for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so the, the purpose of this, hopefully the one thing that you'll get out of this webinar series is that you really shouldn't be stealing. You should be transforming, combining your, your inspiration ideas into your own. Now, creative work is often inspired by something else. We draw inspiration from the work of other designers. But the key is to avoid a direct copy. On the right side, you see the original Mondrian painting, and on the left, a few ads that were inspired by the Mondrian grid and the color palette. Same here, here's a couple of clever ads that took their inspiration from this famous Warhol painting. Now, Stephen Bradley wrote a great blog post about this subject. It's called The Line Between Inspired and Copied From and how to stay on its right side. Um, I'd like to thank Glenna Shaw, fellow MVP and Presentation Guild director, for the sharing this link with me. Uh, if you're interested in where it's located, you can search for it at this website, Van Sayo Design, or if you really can't find it, message me and I'll send you a link. But to paraphrase Stephen's post, copying is an accepted part of the learning process for artists and designers. It helps us better understand how something was created and you can learn from the experience of doing. It trains your technical muscles. Now, while it's okay to copy to learn, it's not okay to copy someone else's work and pass it along as your own, especially for commercial purposes. Visual copyright laws exist. Now, most designs incorporate elements of other designs, but you want yours to be unique. So how can we avoid copying when drawing inspiration from other work? This begins where we draw that inspiration from. Instead of looking at other designers' presentations, be inspired by vastly different sources. Where do I look? Where do you find inspiration for your presentation concepts? Just about anywhere. Here's just a few. Look around you and be observant. Are you watching TV? Look at the title sequences. Watch the better produced commercials. What elements and layouts inspire you for transforming into your presentation concepts? Thumbing through a magazine? Scan the articles and ads in front, you know, the front pages. What grabs your attention? Now, at the beginning of this webinar, I showed a series of slides that featured some of my own photo backgrounds of natural and architectural images. Grab your phone and start your own library of textures and inspirational things. If you, if, and if you really want to strengthen your design chops, I highly recommend that you take some basic design classes if you haven't already, and go or go pick up some books at your local library or bookstore. Follow the exercises as you learn about layouts and scale and space and so on. Now, in the lower right corner, you'll notice I included websites here, but I want to point out a few uh, exceptions to this. The first one is SlideShare. Now, SlideShare is a great repository for all kinds of presentations, but don't go here for inspiration. It's going to be too easy for you to steal um, the great ideas. We want you to be inspired and transform. Many of the presentations here aren't that good, um, beautifully designed either. So you see some really great examples and a lot of not so great examples. So let's look at other types of design for inspirations. Same with note and point, which I think Nolan and I were discussing the other day. We're not sure if this is being updated anymore. Um, have, I haven't looked into this. Have you, Nolan? Um, I have not. I can't say for certain. It does not look like it has been updated yeah. in a while. Um, there's still some beautiful decks on here, really gorgeous work, um, but you have to use caution. Transform new discoveries into your own work. Take a look at portfolio type and, 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 and designer websites that show you a variety of samples of packaging and, and illustration and lettering and logos and colors and this is, this is a, um, a visual feast for design ideas. Um, other graphic design websites like Form 55 and the Inspiration Grid. 
glance at them once in a while when you've got a few minutes. You might be able to capture something that inspires you to do something new later on. Uh, the portfolios on AIGA. This can be a wonderful place to peek around a little bit. Here's an example of a wonderful portfolio. Emek Zanali um, created these pieces um, for a website. Now, any, anyone who's been creating presentations can look at these and say, ah, oh, I got some great ideas for how I can do something similar in a presentation. So this is a great resource for inspiration. Look at the colors. Look at the, look at the layout structure here. This could inspire a beautiful presentation. So where do you put it all? You find all these ideas for inspiration and you aren't going to use them today or even tomorrow. You might not use them for a month. Where do you put them? You want to keep them handy. So you want to keep an inspiration notebook. Now two of the most popular notebook apps are OneNote and Evernote. Both are available for Mac and Windows platforms as well as Android and iOS. So if I snap something on my phone, it automatically syncs with my OneNote notebook and I always have it handy. Um, I began using OneNote at a client's request quite a few years back and it's become my favorite way to hold project information and inspirational ideas. Now I used to keep a folder of things that, uh, clippings that inspired me. But it turned out to be a few piles of clippings that inspired me. So going digital is really the way to go if you want to keep down the clutter. Now, um, if you do like clippings and you keep them handy, you could take a cue from Troy and Lori Collar at TLC Creative. Lori shared this photograph with me. Um, they put their inspirational ideas up on a big mag magnetic board to share with the whole studio. What a great idea if you're on a team and you want to look at things together. I love the corrugated uh, board. I've never seen Magnetic that. Magnetic board, isn't that great? Yeah, it is. Um, so I'm going to show you my notebook in a future episode, and we'll talk about how to use it and how it works. But right now I'm going to show you a few examples that I've taken from my inspirational notebook book and how you can transform and combine them to create something completely different. So here's, here's a clipping from my notebook. I clipped this. I thought it was a clever idea to present metrics. So here's a first stab at it. Um, it looks very similar to the inspiration piece. So let's look at a few different ways that you can change it up a bit. How about doing it vertically, in a vertical metric stacks instead of horizontal? So you've got the colored blocks at the top instead of the colored circles on the left. Large metric numbers, things are color coded, etc. You can still see a bit of the inspiration in, from the original, but it's changed up quite a bit. Change it up even further for a different presentation that happens to be on a dark background. Now it's looking less and less like the original and turning a bit more into my own original design. Now we talk, we're going to talk a little bit more about design trends in future episodes also. Um, this trend of the deep shadow on icons has been around for quite a few years. I'm guessing it's probably waning already and this will start to go away soon. Um, but this was really uh, fresh and new a few years ago, and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. So I created a series of these icons with the deep shadow, and I thought, well, let's see how we can combine these with something else. Here's another clipping from my notebook. Um, four columns, metrics, icons, short little description of what's going on for each metric. Combine that with the, the um, long shadow icons, some different colors, large reversed out um, percentages, and some great hipster ipsum, and you've got something new. Another find from my notebook. I thought this was really a neat idea to, um, to organize some, some uh, columns and ranking, ranking information here. So how can we change this up a bit and make it into our own by combining it with other things. This is almost a direct lift off of the inspiration. If, if I went out with a, in a presentation with something like this, it's bordering on copying, sure. I mean, here's the original. It's almost identical. It's all in grayscale, and I've got large numbers and, and whatnot. So let's change it up a bit more. How about add a little bit of color? That's starting to veer a little bit more away from the original inspiration source. 
add some metrics. Now the only common factor here is that I've got a larger um, rectangle in the center and they're staggered back to each side. What if I stagger them off to the right? Now it doesn't really look like the inspiration source at all. The only thing that was the inspiration was that the center rectangle was larger. And here's another one combining our three, our deep shadow icons with these stair-stepped graphics. I think these deep shadows are a trend now. I just saw that in, in something a client sent to me. You did see you did see the deep icon shadows. Yeah, it must be a, a design trend. Well, you know, I was saying that I grabbed that clipping. Um, it's about three years old now. Oh, okay. Well, they're, they're so, kind of behind the times. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. Sometimes these trends have a way of um, slowly uh, trickling through um, and, and around the globe, and you'll see them trickle and come back. And um, I'm going to stop for a second. Nolan, do you see any questions for uh, me? Yeah, so a couple of people are sharing their, uh, their, the way they organize their inspiration. Uh, Lee uses Airtable which I think I've heard of, uh, but I'm not, I'm not too familiar with. It's, a, it's, an, organization, it's an online organizational tool, um, Airtable. And uh, Wendy just uses a PowerPoint file uh, organized mm -hmm. by sections with uh, you know, labeling, font, title, slides, agenda, just throws everything in PowerPoint. Uh, I think that's a, that, that, that's a good solution. However, of course, um, I, I would, I, I might suggest to Wendy always backing that up, always backing that file yeah. up. Um, not only can it, you know, the larger your file gets, the harder it can be to save and scroll through. But you know, God forbid something goes wrong with that file, yeah. <laughs> you're going to lose all your inspiration. Uh, Julie, so you, um, I, I love what you said about using a piece and then sort of expanding on that. One of my, the favorite decks I ever designed was inspired by a, a two inch web ad and uh, all it, it just yeah. had this cool blue gray gradient. And I sort of, I, I threw that gradient into the presentation and then just sort of kept building from there until yeah. the whole presentation was kind of inspired by that nothing but a gradient and it just ended up exactly. wonderful. Can I, um, what's your, so you know, you're, you're definitely re uh, recommending looking beyond presentation for inspiration, but what's your feeling about collecting actual well-designed presentations and being inspired by those? I'm going to suggest that if you're new to doing this copy, transforming, and combine, uh, and you're working on your client presentations, don't look at those. Don't look at those other presentations. Use it for when you're, you're educating yourself and then put them away. It's too easy to, it's too easy to steal. And we really want our clients' work to be as original as it can be. I agree with that. Uh, however, I, I tell a lot of my clients that they should actively seek out and collect examples of good presentation just so even among their own organization, they can share what could be. Uh, yes. very, very often, you know, people who are not us, not designers, they just don't know what's out. They don't know what's possible. All they, they think a presentation can be is, is bullet points on a, black bullet points on a white slide. So it's why, you know, it's good to, to watch TED Talks, to collect good presentations. You're making a really good point, and perhaps we need to um, establish a distinction here between the intent of, the intent of, of furthering yourself as a presentation designer and the folks who really aren't interested in taking their skills further, but they do need to do this on occasion, Okay. So in, in, in the case of our corporate clients who really aren't aspiring to be designers and aren't going to be doing this for a living, it's not their main job, of course, tell them to look at inspiration from all the different sources and use that. But hopefully the folks on this call and future webinars are looking to become better presentation, um, uh, create better presentation concepts for themselves and for their clients, in fact, further their design chops. Right, okay. and, and of course, if you can get your clients to know that what's possible out there, you know, it might help help to get hired yourself. If they see something great, they might have to come to you to to make it happen. Yeah. All so right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. Go ahead. No, oh, I'm just gonna say we're. You know, we have a couple minutes left. Yeah. Um, did, um, we should wrap up. And and if yep. anybody has any unanswered questions, um, now's the time.
Let me uh, let me wrap up the rest of this okay. section, and then we'll go to a final Q and A. Is that all right? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, great. So uh, a few more concepts. Here's one from a notebook. Love things with quotes. Our clients always need things with quotes, so I'm always looking for new ideas and ways to design quotes. Um, this, of course, the phrase <laughs> the phrase is perfect, but. Um, I really enjoyed the um, the knockout text with the, the um, gradient photograph in the background, and so I combined it into this um, statement slide. And you may recognize the photo of the clouds that was in one of the earlier slides of the presentation. So you can see how I turned those two concepts into something completely new. Again, there's another large quote, and loved loved this saying. Um, but I enjoyed the way that the the, um, the text looked like it was stacking up off the top of the slide. So combined it into design is thinking made visual, this famous quote by Saul Bass, with the large quote mark on the left. And I just want to wrap by saying, everyone, look around you. Um, take pictures. Keep a source file. Keep your PowerPoint file, Wendy, if that's working for you. Airtable, I'm going to check that out and see what it's all about. Um, use a digital notebook of whatever kind because it's a lot easier than clippings. Um, but copy, transform, and combine these things into something new for yourself and your clients. Um, that's it. Nolan, back to you. Q and A. Uh, well, thank you, Julie. That was that was great, and I, it was really nice to see all the examples and examples from beyond presentation and how they work uh, their way into it. So um, we've got a couple of people saying they're checking out Airtable, which is great. Uh, I'm going to check it out as well. Um, I think uh, I think we're we're sort of um, at our time for today. We don't want to keep you much longer. Uh, again, the next webinar is Thursday, June twenty third. You'll get some information about that, and you can sign up. Uh, but I want to thank Julie very much for uh, a really great uh, presentation and a lot to think about and some resources as well. So um, thank you very much, and for everybody attending. Thanks for uh, for attending our first one. And uh, we'll see you hopefully back next month. Thanks, everybody. All right. This has been brought to you by the Presentation Guild.